Since the end of World War II, 20 American warships have been destroyed or severely damaged under attack, but only 25% of those damages involved missiles and torpedoes. The other 75% were destroyed by sea mines, which is why military analysts often call naval mines the Achilles heel of the US Navy because mine countermeasures have been consistently ignored by the US Navy in favor of offensive weapons. I mean, it's easier to get funding to buy a nuclear submarine than it is to invest in mine countermeasures. To deal with mines, you need a very special ship, one that can safely navigate the minefield and clear the way forward. This ship may be small, but the role that it plays is so important that larger ships cannot survive without it. Whether it's an aircraft carrier or a landing party storming the beaches, this ship must first clear the way. This is the Avenger Minesweeper, arguably the most important ship in the US Navy. But what it's made of is not what you think. Minefields can be used to discourage undesired entrance into territorial waters or to direct enemy's fleet into a desired location. Effectively, naval mines force the opponent into following one of these three scenarios. Take the risk and move through the minefield and encounter losses, undertake time-consuming and expensive mine-sweeping operations, or avoid the minefield area altogether, which typically plays into the hands of those who planted the mines. It's worth mentioning that mine warfare is the most cost-effective of asymmetrical naval warfare. The cost of producing the mines is only between half a percent to 10% of the cost of removing them. It takes up to 200 times longer to clear a minefield than the time it took to lay them down in the first place. During World War II, somewhere between 600,000 and a million naval mines were placed. In the Baltic Sea alone, there are approximately 80,000 mines still floating around. After the war ended, more than 25,000 US late mines were still in place in American territorial waters. So in 1945, the US Navy began a large-scale operation to clear those mines. But after almost a year, the Navy gave up the efforts with 13,000 mines still left unswept. And over the course of the next 30 years, the rest of the mines were cleared. But in the process, 500 minesweepers ended up being damaged or sunk. The length of sea mines vary between 20 to 120 inches, as they contain anywhere from 110 to over 2200 pounds of explosives. Mines can be further categorized by method of deployment, their position in the water column, and their method of detonation. Naval mines can be deployed by ships, small fishing boats, divers, helicopters, air bombers such as B-52 and submarines. When it comes to their position in the water column, cue the music. There are three positions for mines. Some mines like to be afloat on top. Some like to be on the bottom of the seabed. And some like to be bound by chains and cables. So they float at a specific depth. What's a mine's favorite position, you ask? Any position that they can explode in is a good position. Most mines deployed during World War I and II were free float mines. They just floated and followed the direction of water currents. These type of mines have been banned by international law for over 70 years, but are still used by some rogue states. Bottom sea mines use their negative buoyancy to stay on the seafloor. They're usually the largest mines out there, loaded with large amounts of explosives and are used in shallow waters in order to sense the ship and explode. These mines are generally laid by aircraft or submarines. Moored sea mines have some buoyancy in order to float at certain water depths, and thus they generally have less explosives. These mines are deployed by surface ships, and they tend to be the most sophisticated and the most expensive type of sea mines. When it comes to detonation methods, there are several mechanisms, including remote-controlled options. Contact mines are the simplest, as they only detonate when a boat comes into contact or very, very close to them. Contact mines are also the least expensive, ranging in price from $2,000 to $15,000. If this video does really well, maybe I could buy one. Influence mines are the most technically advanced mines, as they don't require physical contact in order to detonate. Instead, they rely on sensors that respond to different vessel signatures. Most commonly, magnetic sensors are used.
but other types include acoustic and pressure sensors. Pressure mines are unsweepable because they lay on the bottom of shallow waters. These mines react to the pressure difference caused in the water whenever a ship passes overhead. They're often called anti-invasion mines as they target amphibious craft. Finally, there are homing mines that can shoot a rocket or torpedo. For example, the American Mark 60 Captor anti-submarine mine is anchored to the ocean floor and houses a Mark 46 torpedo in an aluminum shell that is launched upon acquiring a target. Currently, it is estimated that there are 250,000 naval mines in the inventories of 50 navies around the world. Additionally, there are over 100,000 naval mines in waters around the world from previous conflicts. Many of them are still active and present grave danger, which is why mine countermeasures are important. Mine countermeasures, or MCM, can be divided into two types, passive and active. Passive measures include building the hulls of ships from materials such as fiberglass and wood to prevent triggering magnetic mines. For example, the Avenger-class mine countermeasure ship has a wooden hull with a fiberglass coating. Even if the hull is made from steel, degaussing can be used to alter a vessel's magnetic field to prevent magnetic mines from triggering. Other passive countermeasures include using low magnetic electrical motors, minimum pressure hulls, and special propellers to reduce magnetic, pressure, and acoustic signatures of the ship. But reducing all these signatures comes at the cost of being slow, expensive, and having poor seaworthiness. On the other hand, active measures involve discovering and disposing of mines through mine sweeping and mine hunting. Mine sweeping involves a specially designed ship, like the Avenger or a helicopter, to tow a sweep wire that cuts the mine's tethering cables, forcing them to float to the surface. Severed mines are then destroyed, either by gunfire or the EOD team. Mine sweeping is a very slow process, as each run of the mine sweeper only covers 330 to 660 feet of length. Conventional sweeping is also becoming less and less effective as mines can discriminate against false inputs from the sweeper, and this is where mine hunting enters the picture. Mine hunting consists of four different stages. First is the detection stage, which involves towing sonar arrays and magnetometers to detect objects that could be mines. Next stage is classification, which determines whether the object is in fact a mine or not. The third stage is identification, during which a human diver or a remotely operated vehicle is sent to the mine to validate the classification results. The fourth and final stage is neutralization, by setting explosives on or near the mine. Mine hunting remains the best way to deal with influence mines. Alternatively, instead of using ROVs, you can use dolphins as they can be trained to detect mines using their natural echolocation biosonar. Whenever dolphins detect a mine, they report back to their handler. The dolphins then go back to the location of the mine and mark it with a buoy. During the Iraq War in 2003, dolphins helped with detecting more than a hundred sea mines. If time is of the essence, there are two more techniques to deal with mines. First is to run a dummy ship through a minefield, like an old cargo ship, and if the dummy ship passes, other ships can safely follow the same path. Alternatively, you can use depth charges to trigger mines in a small area. This countermining technique is especially useful against acoustic and pressure mines. Only when things go bad and big ships can't go where they need to go, does anyone care about mine countermeasures. During the Iraq War in the early 2000s, the US Navy's fleet got overwhelmed by more than a thousand sea mines deployed by Iraqi forces. At one point, two warships were rocked by explosions which prevented amphibious assault ships from landing in Kuwait, and that kept 30,000 marines stuck at sea. The issue is twofold. First, there is no centralized command for MCM. Second, the US Navy consistently underinvests into mine countermeasures, which follows a cycle. It starts with low funding, then mines cause problems, and the Navy rushes to fund mine countermeasures. Eventually, the money dries up and the cycle repeats. The latest cycle started in 2012 due to Iran's threat to lay mines in the Strait of Hormuz, through which one-fifth of the world's oil supply moves. Just imagine how quickly Iran can disturb the global economy, literally overnight, 
and it could take months to deal with it. The ships of the Cold War era rely on older technology, but a lot has changed since then. Mines are more sophisticated than ever. Modern mines use anechoic coatings, can be non-metallic, and may be oddly shaped to avoid detection. Meanwhile, the Cold War era Avenger-class ships are getting old, even though they underwent a $300 million upgrade. Only eight mine countermeasure ships remained in service as the other five were retired and also one was lost after slamming into a coral reef. But the future of American mine hunting seems to be in littoral combat ships like the Independence class, which is made from anti-magnetic aluminum. The new ships will rely on a new mine hunting system that uses autonomous drones to detect, identify and destroy naval mines. Littoral combat ships will deploy two small autonomous boats which will approach a suspected minefield. Then the ANAQS-20 sonar will be deployed to search for tethered or partially buried mines. When a mine is found, a communication buoy is deployed followed by a Barracuda mine-killing drone. The Barracuda will acquire the target and send the picture to a human controller who will decide whether or not to destroy the mine. When the order is given, the Barracuda approaches the mine and detonates it with an explosive charge. Not only is this much faster, it also removes human divers from inherently dangerous minefields. In July of 2021, the US Navy completed a three-week testing of littoral combat ship mine hunting mission package and are currently awaiting results before moving forward with mass production of this autonomous mine countermeasure system. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're considering supporting us on Patreon, check out the link in the description.